This is Surface Studio. Uh, I love this product. Isn't it gorgeous? Take a look. Every time we show it to somebody, they, we get this, I never like saying a product's beautiful because that's, that's kind of weird, but I gotta tell you, uh, I'm gonna show you at home. Like, take a look at that. Every time we show somebody, I think we hear, hey, man, that thing's beautiful. So take a look. So when you look at this product, there's a few ways to kind of wrap your mind around it. I'm gonna walk us through a few of those right now. So uh, first thing to note is we, we really did build it for creators. We, we built it for professionals. It's meant, it's meant all these ideas, it's meant to transform the way you're gonna work. It, it has to. It's what it's meant for. It's gonna help you produce. But I think in, in its essence, in everything we designed it around, is we wanted to transform the way you create and think about creating. It's kind of built, when you look at it, you can look at both of these, but you look and it's, it's built to pull you in. And I'll explain that, but it is, it is all fundamentally made to immerse you into the content or to the creation that you want to work with. And I think that's something to kind of understand as we walk through. If you can remember that, that'd be helpful. Start with the screen, though, because if you can see how thin it is here, this is a forged aluminum enclosure. The lines are seamless. When you have a chance in the showcase later, get as close to this product as you can. I want you to look at every subtlety here. There is a collection of so many details that you will not see, and, and they all come together so beautifully on the product. But start with the enclosure. When you have a chance, take a look at it. It's a fully embodied aluminum enclosure. It's housing the thinnest LCD that has ever been created at 1.3 millimeter that sits in this product at this size. You have to think here, we reinvented the backlight, the prism sheets, the color filters, the polarizers, the glass itself all coming together. There's a ton of work that goes into this screen that I think you can kind of feel. You can kind of feel it. But if you take that 1.3 millimeters and you take that aluminum chassis, this is the thinnest 12 and a half, it's 12 and a half millimeters. It's the thinnest desktop monitor ever created. And of course it has touch. Of course it has touch, but ever. Take a look at the front of this product. It's a 28 inch diagonal. That's 28 inches across. It pushes 13 and a half million pixels. That's about 63% more than a 4K TV if you're doing the math. On this product, you wanna be able to see everything at all times no matter where you are. The only thing you won't be able to see on this screen specifically is a pixel. And the, the reason for that is the closer you get to it, we wanna keep you there. You ever walked up to a high definition TV and got a little too close? You have, clearly. And it's kind of blurry. That's not good for you, by the way. Just get further back and get perspective. You've done that and it just gets more beautiful and you can find that perfect, you can find that perfect distance to your TV. This product, no matter where you are, the closer you get, I think the more refined it gets, the further you get, the more perspective and beautiful it gets. And it stays with you, that's critical. If we're gonna keep you in that space, if we're gonna keep you immersed in all your content and what you're trying to create, I think that's vital. I think that's vital. So now let's talk about the colors on this screen. Because when we talk about this idea where you can't see a pixel and you need to see all your content, you also need to be able to see life as it was meant to be. So we call this true color. And we designed the product for the depth of color within it. And it's kind of gonna show you a few things as I walk through this. But the idea is we want to render the deepest reds possible. We want to bring you the truest blues possible. We want to bring you the most vibrant greens you can live with to just bring the real world as you know it. Okay, think if you're a movie director. If you're making your movie, if that's what you're doing, you want to make it as the world's meant to see it in real color, in real life. That's critical to you. Or if you're the person watching what was intended from the director. You want to see that intent. It's like in real life, when you take a photo, don't you want to see the beauty of the photo when you get it? Don't your memories come back with that? All those senses are firing and color being the deepest and richest one. So this product, with its 13 and a half million pixels, with a bunch of color calibration that we do with Surface to bring it to life, we're able to get you the most depth you can possibly find in these colors. That then allows the creator to make exactly, or render the world, if you will, as he or she believes it needs to be rendered. Now, with the integration with Windows and the device, and you hear Terry talking about how those things come together and things light up, here's a subtlety for you. 
If I just click through here, you're gonna very, very see some, I'm gonna keep clicking, you're just gonna see a difference in the screen, just slight subtle changes. Now what I'm doing is I'm moving from DCI-P3, which I think many of you understand, it's cool, to sRGB on the fly. Why? If I'm going to create in those deep colors, but I'm not sure if my customer or who might be watching this movie has the ability to push this much pixel at somebody or this much beauty or this much depth. Keep in mind, this, there is no monitor on the, in the planet like this one. Oh, there's 99% better color than the monitors on the planet. So you're gonna, you, there was this world where many are living in sRGB. So when you do create, this idea where I just have one flip and as I'm creating and writing, and I'll show you that in a bit, you will find yourself saying, okay, here's the beauty of the colors, the depth of the colors, and then here's what it might look like if somebody was using sRGB. I think that's a pretty, pretty cool way to design. Okay. On top of the color, we call it true color. This idea of immersing you is important. This is a three by two aspect ratio. You can see that. You get the depth of color in it. Think of it as four 14 inch displays stitched together, kind of bringing all the information you need right in front of you all at once. The idea that you can see more patterns the idea that you can get more information all at once and stay in your product, that will lead you to draw better conclusions. That's real. When we say your ideas are your best work, it's critical that we keep you there. It's critical that you can see everything. I'm gonna show you something subtle here, but sometimes, and we've talked about this, sometimes the most subtle things can have the, the deepest impact. Uh, hey Cortana, bring up the surface design doc. Here's the document about Surface Studio Design. Okay, so I'm gonna just open this document and show it to you. This is Microsoft Word. You're probably familiar with it. I am going to just flip over one page to show you something. I'm holding an eight and a half by 11 piece of paper. That seems, this isn't like a magic trick, I'm just holding a piece of paper. This paper looks eerily familiar to what's on the screen. The reason I'm showing you that is the device itself has 192 PPI. It is tuned perfectly with Windows to scale it to true life. So if we were gonna bring you true color, what was the other physical pieces we can bring that triggered that innate sense where it felt so familiar? Well, at eight and a half by 11 and 12, check this out. That is the exact same product that you see on the screen there. That's a one for one match. <laughs> Subtle, yes, but important. One inch on this screen is one inch in real life. What you see is really what you get. This whole idea of print preview is completely gone. As you get into this and you work in it, you stay in it. You stay in it because it's your real work. And then Word comes in, the Microsoft Office team, and they refine their product so much to bring Studio to life that you get these unbelievable feelings. Look how clear it is as I flip through here. Isn't that cool? It's just got this smooth scroll. If I wanted more information, I'd pinch it and I can see so many documents all at one time. Whether I'm reading a book, whether I'm working through this Surface spec, or I just wanted to get to a certain section and just absorb it, I think it's critical. Now, we talk about immersing you in this product quite a bit, quite a bit. And so the best way to kind of deal and think about that, as I'm gonna show you, is to think about the screen first. And we talked about the depth of the screen, we talked about how big the screen is, but really if you're gonna design around a screen, and the team called it designing a floating sheet of pixels, we want you to see this product for the pixels you're working on, for the screen, for the experiences that the software is bringing to you. What that means is the hardware has to disappear into the background. It has to fade away, but how? I remember with the team how we would sit and talk every single night where we had to make the product acoustically very quiet, keep somebody in. But we also knew it had to be visually very, very quiet. And so how do you do that? Take a look at these chrome arms. When you can see them, this is important. These chrome arms were meant to completely fade into the background. Now you'll see light hitting them now, and they look beautiful, and, and we're proud of that, and the design team did an incredible job bringing that to life. But what they really do is they're meant to reflect the entire environment, why? Because when I'm in front of it, when I'm gaining pers perspective, or when I'm up next to it and I'm drawn into what I'm doing, that's all I should see. The rest should fade to background. Everything else should be absorbed behind me, which was critical. Now, it wasn't just the screen and the floating sheet of pixels. It was also about power and performance, and we know that. If you want a great product 
we got to bring you all the pop you expect in a performant product like this. We spent tireless night taking the air out of this product, integrating a 270 watt power supply, an NVIDIA 980M GPU with a 12K on the 3D mark, for those of you who know what it is, a Core i7 quad core in the product, a two terabyte rapid hard drive, 32 gigabytes of memory, three interlinked fans with unprecedented cooling, unbelievable, an Xbox protocol for wireless controllers built into the product, and 2.1 surround sound speakers. It all fits perfectly in this perfect little tiny box with only one cable coming out the back of it. We then allow for what we call the four floating points of contact on the base of the product, that, that base you just saw. And that unkinkable cable that comes out the back is locked in. So when you want to move the device, can you see how effortless that is for me? If I want to do a show me scenario or show you scenario, I can move it any way I want and just kind of show you whatever you want, but those are those four, four floating points that are critical. Now many times, we can read out specs, I can tell you how performant this machine is, and it is. It is. It has been phenomenal to use. No, no question. But performance a lot of time, it's just more than specs. I can do a performance demo and you've seen those. And, but it's more than specs. It is about keeping you in the moment. If we're gonna have you creating, if you're gonna be producing, if you wanna stay uninterrupted, you have to find different ways to utilize the product. One of those should be voice or conversation. Built into the product itself, there is a linear mic array that sits on the product. So I can say from across the room what I need, whether it's locked up or not locked up, you can talk to this device. I think that's pretty cool, because for me, I use Cortana all the time, and it's pretty meaningful. It keeps me connected to what matters most. Like, here's my best example today. Uh, hey, Cortana, add Get Mary a gift to my list. Okay, I added that to your list. Okay, I operate in this function. So you know, it's Mary's birthday today. She's my wife, it's October 26th. I'm in New York with all you fine people. She's in Seattle, probably watching right now, so happy birthday. But to get this gift was important to me and to stay connected was important to me. You see how I bring it up here just by calling Cortana and it integrates perfectly. This now integrated into Wonderlist, which is really important to me. If you haven't tried Wonderlist, give it a shot. All my phones, no matter what platform you may be using, all your phones, your Surface products, any PC, you have Wonderless on it, and that list now carries with me, so I can remember to get Mary a gift. I feel like some of you are judging me because you think I haven't bought Mary a gift. This is a demo. <laughs> and I did get Mary a gift, uh, and, and, and it's nice. And so I'm just gonna, it also says I'm rehearsing for presentation, so just to make the point, I've already done that too. Okay, that's bringing a Cortana. But that same idea to keep you connected or keep you moving or keep you productive, we also integrated a Studio HD camera. We call it the Surface Studio camera for a reason. We really focused here to bring you high-end video conferencing. That was the goal. We wanted to bring auto exposure to you. We wanted to make sure we brought the perfect face space rendering of color to make sure you look great or as good as you can or maybe what it looks like in real life. And I'm sure it's great. And it also brings Windows Hello for you and your family if you were to use this product at home, and I think that's it's pretty impactful. Between the camera and the mics to keep you immersed and keep moving, I think it's pretty important. Now this is Surface Studio. It's beautiful. We think you're gonna love it as is. It's got the best screen in its class. The performance is gonna be unmatched. The Cortana and Skype integration Microsoft Office coming to life on the product. Windows and Office together have never been better on any given single product ever. What do you think of Surface Studio? Okay. We've done this before. Surface has always been about more. It was never as simple as just a desktop. Pro was more than a tablet. Book, it's so much more than a laptop. Even Hub, it's more than just a whiteboard. All of these are category-defining products. Why would Studio be different? Studio's made 
made to bring out the great in you, made to define a new category. It's not just another beautiful PC. It is a product that was made to help get you to your most creative point. You. You. It doesn't matter how you create. Now let me take you back. Do you remember David William Hearn? Remember last year I talked about David William Hearn. He's a composer. He makes symphonies. He inspires me. What a lovely human being. But he makes his symphonies on surface. Let's try this. Hey Cortana, play David William Hearn. Playing David William Hearn. Take a listen. God, so beautiful. Now do you remember? We talked about David. This is David in his flow, where he's creating at his best. He puts his pen to a screen. The hardware disappears to the background. He finds his flow, and he makes beautiful symphonies. He's a creator, there's no doubt. But I think what today is about, I think we're all creators. You don't have to be David, or that artist, or the designer, or you can be. You could be that office, accountant, late at night, working, building their own symphony on a spreadsheet. Or how about your teachers, the teachers who may teach your kids? The impact that they have on the world, aren't they creating? Every single one of us is a creator. We want to use this product to help every one of us create. Start with your mind, move through your heart, let it out your hand onto a beautiful screen and into someone else's life. This product is about endless possibilities and pure imagination. Now this is Surface Studio. So I walk you through it, but this is really a new way to create. 
It's a new way to produce. It's absolutely a new way to work. It's meant to turn your desk into a studio. That's what it's going to do. Now, the idea behind it is we want you to be able to move effortlessly between those perspectives of drawing, drafting, up to typing, back through, so you can move through your motions and nothing gets in your way. It was designed in a way where this hinge had to come to life and there was so much around it. And those arms that disappear in the background, they play this critical role. There are 80 custom parts in those two arms, each having 80, which is critical. Creating a zero gravity hinge, what does that mean? We basically means it's weightless. And that's critical. Because what we have is a 13 pound display with all its thinness and the aluminum enclosure that we talked about. But we have to make it as simple as possible. You can pick any angle. We have a counter spring system in that same base we talked about earlier that allows you to put it in any position you want. And if you wanted to draft, and if you wanted to create and get really into your product, we talked about the screen. So the closer you get to it, the more powerful that becomes for you to stay in it because it's so clear and that clarity was critical. It was critical. So I'm gonna bring us to the Surface Pen now. This is one of my favorite devices on the planet. I think it's making a difference in so many people's world. We're seeing pens catch up digitally everywhere. I think it's just awesome. People are writing again. I believe that writing pulls out creativity in many of us, almost all of us. Put your pen to paper and it's meant to be innate. It's something you have always done. But then take Microsoft Office and let's bring up that studio, studio document one more time. So I'm gonna bring up the studio doc and I'm gonna walk you through some of the technicalities of the pen here. And we'll bring that up for you. So this is that same document. Try not to take too many pictures. There's a lot of pieces coming together here. But the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna zoom out and take a, just a different look at the collection of images here. I'll probably come here and this is the design for thermal that we're looking at, which is cool. Now, if I wanna edit a document in that real-time editing, have you seen this with Word? It's a very, very cool way to look at it. I'm gonna do this in red. You don't actually have to do anything anymore. The idea where you pick up a pen, put it down to paper, and start writing. And remember, put it down to paper. This is an eight and a half by 11 sheet of paper. What makes this demo kind of weird is I'm a lefty, so I'm sorry about that. And, you know, I write weird, but I'm gonna just show you some positions so you can kind of understand where I'm able to put my arm down and relax the way I want to. Now this is Windows working, what we call palm rejection, where it's so important that when you lean on this device and you get all the way into it, if you're gonna immerse yourself, nothing wants to bring you out. And then I write, now look at the latency, meaning the speed of the ink coming out of my pen. All you can see is the ink and how smooth it is. So we'll try it here. The idea of I'm able to write at full speed the idea behind that is the latency we talk about is about reducing it to the least amount of milliseconds so you can never feel the difference between a real pen and ink coming out of it onto paper to a digital pen and the ink coming out. That crossing of the analog or the physical and digital world that you heard about today is just as real on these devices. And it's critical because it kind of brings us to a pretty cool space. Now I'm gonna zoom out. I'm gonna get to the end of this document because this is really how I work. I'm a creator in documents. I know that sounds weird, but that's what I am. I read a lot, I write a lot. That's how I create. Every night I do writing. In the morning we have some meetings and I tell my stories to the team and we inspire products and we go drive for as the best we can be, but I do writing and it's, it's super meaningful to me. This document can do the same thing, but let's just step back and look at what Word and Office is doing for now me editing a document. So this spec is meaningful to me. This spec is written by a gentleman by the name of Peter. He's one of our product leaders. And he would have put this spec together. If I wanted to give him feedback or edit something, if there's something I like, imagine how you can just simply scribble and the entire paragraph knows I'm trying to highlight it and it just comes to life. Pretty cool, right? Or, Pete, I don't like this part of the document. Just scribble it out and it goes away because it's not what was intended and the document just reflows perfectly. That's the power of Microsoft Office and the pen and that innate feeling. Pretty cool. So I'm gonna zoom back out in just a minute so you can see this. I'll zoom out for you. And I'm gonna go to the bottom piece. Now I'm gonna write a note and I wanna show you something new. I'll give you this. Um, team, I think they like your product. Do you? What do you guys think of this product? 
Watch how I just come up to show you what I wrote, which is cool. I now want to introduce you to this thing, the surface dial. The surface dial was created as a new form of input. We've learned a ton over the last several years of how people are using their pen and how they use their other hand to do operate, whether it's touching the screen, grabbing a mouse, typing, but there's so many different flows of interaction that happen. This product was meant to help you change that workflow, give you that next option to help you create even faster. Now, we have integrated global controls into this, which are part of Windows. I know that sounds like a lot of words, but what it means is it's built right into Windows. As I hold it down, can you see right here in the middle of the screen, if you bring this up? You can see that here I have the dial essentially on my screen in front of me. This allows me to select different things within Windows. In this sense, I'm going to show you a new product called Ink Replay. You'll notice my ink went away on the screen. That was purposeful. But watch as I move the dial to the right as the ink comes back on the screen. If you can see my hand and you see the ink coming to life behind me, now here's what I love about this. I can recreate this ink or I can take it away at any given time. But if the team gets this document and they want to replay my emotion, you can see it because it came out of my hand. If I had typed that message, you would not have the inner pieces of what came with it, those three explanation points may not look the same. The writing may have looked faster or slower, which is important. Let me show you another cool trick. If I just come here, this product comes to life with the scroll wheel. So as I scroll, can you see this flipping? Just moving my hand and flipping through. Showing you how the device works off the screen, and we're gonna show you how it works on the screen in just a minute. But if you have a Surface Pro 3, if you have a Surface Pro 4, if you have a Surface Book, this mode of interaction is for you too. So don't worry, if you already have one of those, you can grab a surface dial, you can turn up your volume, turn it down, change the brightness, scroll through your document like I do here. You can do all the magical things that the dial does for you to help you create. Now in a world where I end my creations in Word, there are others out there that start their creations in Word. I have a dear friend here who's got an awesome set of uh, pieces in comic book world, if you will, well, he calls them motion books. Please give a warm welcome to Ben, the Madefire CEO. Hey, Ben. Hey, Tom. It's good to be here, man. There you go, man. Oh, you got your own pen? I'm good. All right. Thank you. Madefire is all about storytelling, and in particular, comics. We love comics because they're such a powerful storytelling format. They are literally words and pictures. We've built a platform that enables anyone to make a digital book we call a motion book. And motion books have motion, sound, and depth. And to create a motion book, it's really important to have a digital workflow. And I'd like to show you how that works on Studio. So here we go. Let me get into my studio here. Great. I've got my pen. So I make a book called Mono, which is about an ape man, of course, don't we all? And my first step is to write the script. So I'm gonna jump into Word here. This is my Mono script. I'm pretty happy with my script. I'm just gonna pick my pen, and I'm gonna focus on this area close up of Mono. Hopefully you can see that. And the step after the script is to work on thumbnails. And thumbnails are a sketch of the action. So I'm moving from words to pictures. So I'm going to put in uh, mono here. So I'm going to put in his uh, shoulder and his back, a bit of a neck, and his face. He's a pretty hairy guy, so there we go. A bit of an eye here, a bit of hair, nose. And a mouth, nah, that's not too bad. And I've got a caption, which I'm gonna pop up here. And I've got a dialogue, which I will put here. So I'm pretty happy with that. And here it's very simple to do. But previously, I would be writing in Word, I'd be printing out onto paper, I'd be finding a pencil, I'd be drawing my thumbnails, I'd probably rewrite, reprint, staple, unstaple. I've been known to lose my pages. 
And ultimately, I'd be scanning all of that back in in order to get back to here and back into my workflow. And we've got on the left-hand side our layers. We've got our Photoshop file in the middle. We've got time. And I'm just going to check my sequence here. So we're establishing mono. We've got our caption and our dialog. That's working. And my next sequence is looking pretty good. So I'm ready to hit publish. Here's where I publish my motion book into the Madefire app. This is the Madefire app in Windows 10. Would you like to have a look at this? <laughs> okay, so I'm gonna pop this around and let's see how this comes to life. to say. <laughs> Thank you. It's amazing to me that Studio makes it possible to have my entire creative process in one place. It's an incredible thing for creators and storytellers and certainly for making motion books on Madefire. Thank you. That was pretty cool, bro. That was super cool. That was cool. That's cool. So you saw how Studio changes the way I work, how I create, and, and it has been a phenomenal product to do so. You can see how it's changing how Ben works. Now we have a ton of other partners we've been working with to bring Studio to life and to bring the Surface Dial specifically to life and that mode of interaction between the two. There's a company by the name of Mental Canvas. There's been some images around here. It's a pretty interesting company. It's awesome. Julie Dorsey's the CEO. Uh, it's this true example of where the software was built specifically for this device. This is a drawing you're looking at. This is Spring Studios. This is exactly where we are. And you can see all the dimensions in the drawing where the lines are coming out of this thing. And it's pretty beautiful. And it's an image that it comes to life only on something where you're able to put the pen down, the dial down, and start creating in a product like Mental Canvas. You're going to meet Julie later when you go down to the workshop. You'll be able to see all the details of what she does and many of our other partners. One of the things that we learned here with Dial that really kind of inspired us was the fact that when a developer, a designer, a creator, or even somebody who sits down to edit through documents and wants to move faster, the idea where both of your hands are engaged, one on the surface dial, the other with a pen, and you're in mode and you're immersed and you're flowing, it's, it's very, very intense and you can get so much out of it. We then took a few minutes working with our developers to put a small vignette together so you can see what's happening with the Surface Studio and the Surface Dial. Take a quick look. When I saw the Surface Studio for the first time, the jaw drops a little bit. The Surface Dial with the Studio, there's just this magic that takes place. It's definitely redefining the concept of desktop. Sketchable is principally designed for pen and touch input. The Surface Studio fits it to a T. With the Surface Studio, what I saw immediately was the size of the screen. Whatever you're doing, if you're trying to be productive, real estate matters. The really special thing about the Surface Dial is when we can change the color while you're painting without even picking up the tip, that's not just as good as real life, it's better. At Bluebeam Software, we make solutions for the architecture, engineering, and construction industries. With the Surface Studio, you really have a new collaborative way of interacting with documents. It is essentially the same angle as the drafting table. You're more immersed in the technology than once you're down in studio mode. With the dial, there's an off-screen and on-screen presence, and so I can work however makes sense to me. Mental Canvas combines freehand drawing with 3D capabilities. You could draw on a canvas, but then you can also project your strokes into space. 
work with Surface Studio, you just get this really fluid experience of creation that's just not possible anywhere else. The experience so far has been seamless. It's gonna change the way that people do work at their desk. Once you start to use it, you don't feel like you're working with a computer anymore. You feel like the computer is serving you rather than the other way around. It's absolutely incredible. It's incredible to see. <laughs> it's incredible to see how the dial brings this product to life, how it changes the way you can think about a product like this. It's a product you can pre-order today. If you want to experience it, which I think a lot of people may, get out to the Microsoft Store, any Microsoft Store tomorrow, and the Surface Studio will be there. Put your hands on it, get close to it, get close up to that screen. Now for $3,000, it's an incredible value. It's for the creators and the professionals out there. But it's also for anyone who wants to replace multiple monitors or somebody who uses a pad for just writing. It's got so much opportunity. I can't wait for you guys to get your hands on it. I just can't, I want you to get your hands on this product. Now it's available in limited quantities this holiday, so if you do wanna get your hands on your product, you better do that pretty quickly. This is a product that I believe, that we believe, truly brings out the creator in all of us.